Welcome to DFRSoft's instructional video on reliability plotting. <clears throat> I'm Dr. Alec Feinberg, founder of DFRSoft. And DF, in uh, DFRSoft, uh, we have the theory of everything for design assurance. So in one tool, so that you are able to do all the things that you need to do uh, using, hopefully using DFRSoft. We try to get all the, the best tools there for you. And all the tools are provided on the top of the menu. So let's take a look at them, and then we'll get into reliability plotting. The first thing you'll notice in our open style menu is that uh, all the modules are numbered. Uh, so <clears throat> the reliability plotting is in module two and three, and that corresponds to the tabs down below. <clears throat> and so you can tab over or hyperlink over to any of the modules. We have our statistical distributions, field returns, system reliability, environmental profiling, availability and sparing, parametric reliability, uh, test planning chi-squared automated test plans, software reliability growth, um, all the quality tools such as lot sampling, uh, SBC, um, design of experiments, engineering tools like thermal analysis, via shock and vibration, electrical analysis, corrosion. A lot of great tools in our, of course, our physics of failure library and design for reliability and quality uh, guidelines in the library. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we said it was modules two and three, we're going to hyperlink over and uh, take a look at uh, the reliability plotting section. It's laid out just like Excel, so you can look at the tabs on the bottom, <clears throat> or you can hyperlink, let's hyperlink over. And this is module two uh, versus module three, uh, which is, this is rel plots, module three is S rel plots. And in S rel plots, for example, uh, let's look at the data entry area. We'll start off with that. You'll see in the data entry area, uh, let me zoom in uh, just a little bit. It's very simple data entry. You put in your observation time. Uh, you put in the number of units that are observed uh, for each observation time. And you put in an S or an F depending on whether they're suspended or failed. Suspensions are good units that are removed during the test or they might be field units that were not had to be repaired. F are your failures. And when you're making your data entry, it will go a little faster if you turn off the calculator, which is up here, uh, and that turns off DFRSoft. You can make your data entry a little faster. Some computers are slower than others to uh, calculate. Uh, but you can also do this in real time. It's just a little slower. If you have a lot of data, I'm, I recommend doing that also helps for when you don't put things in order. So now in module two, rel plots, the difference is you don't have to put in the S or the F. All the data entries, your observation time and your group data for your number of failures for each observation time um, are assumed to be failures. Now you can do suspensions in this in rel plots uh, at the end of the test. Typically in reliability testing, uh, we don't have suspensions, good units removed during the test. They're always at the end of the test. So DFRSoft has that option for in rel plots, or you can do that in at rel plots or s rel plots. So you put in your suspensions at the end of the test up here. So if I take that out, you'll see it turns green. So the red just indicates, because you tells you that you've entered uh, suspended units at the end of the test. You can also tell at the suspension time, like say it didn't occur. If you don't put anything there, it'll be assumed to happen at the last uh, time frame of 710 hours here. So uh, if I put in 3,000 hours, for example, if the test may might have three units that lasted 300 hours, it'll, it'll update that suspension time, which will uh, be primarily used in the MLE area and the information is provided for that. Uh, now your suspension units are in all the um, regression analysis as well as MLE. So <clears throat> um, we have our data entry and the next thing you're going to notice in module two and three, the very similar, uh, is all the results are to the right and you immediately get your results for every distribution. So you don't have to uh, select any particular distribution that you want to look at one at a time. This is an advantage in DFRSoft over other routines where you don't have to make a selection. 
and you have your median plotting position and your results for your maximum likelihood estimation, your y bull uh, regression, CDF, your log normal, your exponential, your normal, and your three parameter y bull. These are all your regression results, and this is your maximum likelihood results. And it's the same thing in module three. So right next to it, you'll see the same exact uh, method that is used uh, for your data order. Now, the next thing you'll see to the right is if you want to do mixed modal analysis. Now, I recommend that you um, look at our video on that because we're not going to cover that today. So uh, there is a very good video that explains that. Um, and you also want to look at other, your other videos. And uh, you have the video selections. You just click on them, and it'll bring you to the video selection. This is our field return MTBF video. And it'll tell you how that you might want to do reliability field analysis in this. We also have a field returns module. So um, here's our module and there's a data sort uh, that will help you sort out the data so you can do your plotting in SREL plots for field data or Weibull analysis and you can do your mixed modes right here. And there's videos on both field returns and your mixed modes that explains that. But we're going to focus today just on uh, this particular reliability plotting. So we're now ready to look at our plots and the plot area. And let me uh, zoom, let's look at rel plots first and we'll zoom out. All the plots are uh, provided so you can see the results right away in DFR soft. They're all right next to each other. You have, uh, so it's a very easy eyeball. You can see what fits the data best uh, right away just by eye. And you have your maximum likelihood estimation, your regression for Weibull, your log normal results. Uh, and you have your exponential and your normal and your three parameter Weibull results that are right next to each other. And that's for both routines are laid out exactly the same. If you go to SREL plots, you'll see that as well. So everything is right next to each other. Now, <clears throat> also what you'll notice is that just above each plot is the statistical results. So if we go to, let's look at the regression because people are familiar with that. I'll zoom in on the re results just above the Weibull regression results. Notice you have your confidence bands around it. The green line is your regression fit, and the blue line is the data entry. You have, this is your cumulative probability in percent, and your time axis, and your labeling. The nice thing, oh, just as long as we're talking about the graph, I should mention, that labeling and graphical graphics are superior in DFR soft because anything that you can do in Excel you can do in DFR soft you can relabel and you can copy and paste this into word for your reports you can change the axis uh, you can reform that the scales uh, you have that ability uh, you can change the grid lines and the colors of the plot and you can bring them over uh, to say a PowerPoint presentation or something like that. Very good graphics in DFR soft. Now the uh, results above, you'll see that you have your results right away for your beta, your characteristic life, your MTBF, your intercept, and your statistical row, with your goodness of fit, now, as well as you have a regression on X and regression on Y. Another thing that you can do is if you want to override the beta, you can do that for each routine, uh, for whether it's regression or MLE. So you have that ability to do that uh, in DFR soft for any one of the modules. And that's going to come into play with what's called Y Bayesian analysis, when we, especially for the MLE, maximum likelihood estimation, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. The next thing is you notice the statistical row is a, uh, an indication of your goodness of fit. How do I know which fits the data best? Well, you, the first way is you have the eyeball method. The next thing you can do is DFRSoft has a ranking order. Uh, you can see that in the data, 
uh, it gives you an indication. This is a light blue. It indicates that the WIBO regression was the best fit for the data. And there's a ranking for that down below. And that's explained. There's two methods for ranking. Uh, and the predictor uh, information is provided down there. And you can look at that. And we can see that the uh, for this particular predictor, the regression is the number one. Uh, the three parameter Weibull was the number two, the Weibull MLE is the number three. So it gives you an idea of the, re of the predictions. So that's one area that you can look at to try to understand both uh, statistically and graphically. You can look at your fits. So you have all your information right there. You can also change your confidence bands about your fit. Here I have it at the 80% level. You can do one or two-sided confidence. You can change that. Now that we have our results, the next thing you might want to do is ask the question, uh, uh, what's, what if I want to make some estimations? Well, uh, what's going to happen? I have my beta and things like that. Well, down below, there's a couple of places in DFRsoft that I want to bring your, to your attention. Down below, you can make some estimations here for your percent failure for each distribution. You can enter your time of interest or the reliability. But also, DFRsoft has a couple of other things. Uh, there's um, You can do uh, reliability plots of the distribution down below. You'll see here. Uh, is your are your distribution plots that you can make uh, for any particular one? Uh, if, for example, uh, here's your Weibull two and three parameter, you put in your characteristic life, your shape parameter, and your uh, if you is this three parameter or two parameter fit, and you can um, look at your distribution in time. Here's the PDF. Here's the Weibull hazard rate. And you can plot this over any time frame, your viable reliability, as well as your CDF function. Now, that's one way of looking at your distribution. Another way is to go over to the distribution and confidence sheet. The distribution and confidence sheet is module number five. And in that, we have each distribution laid out here. So let's go to the viable area, because a lot of people are interested in that. And we can look at that. Uh, and you can see that you can enter your characteristic life and your beta and the time of interest, and it will give you your results for this square right here. And you have alternate entries uh, down below for different ways that you, what, for what you know about the distribution and what you're trying to find. So uh, you have all that and, your con and some confidences on this page too, as well as chi-squared and normal distribution, exponential. This is a very good page to use to find that out. So now go back to the plotting. The next thing I'd like to talk a little bit about is the three parameter Weibull. Off to the right is your three parameter Weibull. Uh, let me zoom out on that. You have your ability to do your three parameter Weibull plotting. Uh, and there's uh, information on, on this video and how to use it. You can change your gamma or DFRsoft finds the gamma to within one or two percent. And you can refine that gamma or you can, if you have knowledge of gamma, which is your third parameter. Uh, you can see how it fits. Uh, you can try to improve your row by changing that. As you improve the row, uh, you'll improve, you'll refine it. Uh, if you have knowledge of when things are shipped and you might want to start off. So gamma is really just a time shift uh, for your distribution. It's uh, actually any function can have a time shift, but Weibull is the most popular to have three parameters. So you can use that. Okay, so the last thing I'd like to talk about is the um, ability to do um, what's called Y Bayesian analysis in DFR Soft. You can do that in rel plots, and uh, in rel plots, what you want to do, I have that set up in another area, so let me go to that. So here we are uh, set up for a Y Bayesian analysis. Let's say I only have one data point. I know that I had one failure at 800 hours, and I had, uh, let me zoom in on this a little bit, and I had 12 uh, suspensions, and my time of my suspensions is 3,000 hours. So you put that in, and you can go over to your Weibull MLE, 
and it'll give you your information about your expectations for that default beta uh, and your characteristic life and your MTBF and you are, so you have information on that so you so uh, because the units lasted 3,000 hours uh, the it's giving you a characteristic life of 6871 which is dependent upon the um, the suspension time and the number of units that lasted so that concludes our talk on reliability plotting and DFR soft. Thank you for listening.